Hi everyone, welcome to our first lecture. Today we're going to talk about infinite sequences and series. This corresponds to section 10.1 and 10.2 in your textbook. So let's start with sequences. This is 10.1, sequences. What is, what is a sequence? A sequence really is just a list of numbers. So a sequence is just a list of numbers. For example, you can have something like one, three, five, seven and so on, right? This is one sequence. Or you can have something like 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. This is another one, another sequence. As you can see, sequence gonna have uh, numbers. Right? The, the first number, I call it A1. The second number, A2. The third, A3, A4, and so on. These numbers are called terms. For example, the second number is called the second terms. The second term. And this is the third term and the fourth term, and so on and so forth, right? The number, the subscript here, is called index. Okay. This is what a sequence is. Formally, we can also define a sequence. Formally. We can also define a sequence to be a function. Define a sequence to be a function. It's a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. Here's the set of positive integers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Right? Remember, a function has a domain and a codomain. So a sequence can be thought of as a function. And this function has the domain to be this set here. Okay. For example, uh, let's call the first sequence star yeah so for example in star the sequence is the function i call it a right from the set of positive integers yeah to the set of real number this is the symbol for the set of real number set of real numbers okay. and it's defined to be as follow so when you plug in one it's going to give you the first number so it's going to give you one right? because that's the first number and when you plug in two it's going to give you the second number, so 3, right? And when you plug in 3, it's going to give you the third number, that's 5. So when you plug in 1, it gives you A1. Plug in 2, it gives you A2, 
plug in three, it gives you a three. So as you can see, instead of writing a and parentheses one, we write a subscript one. It's really just two different ways of writing the same things. And that's why we can think of a sequence as just a list of numbers, right? That's why we can define it this way, or we can define it formally as a function. Okay. Most of the time, we're going to think of sequence as just a list of numbers. Uh, but just keep in mind that we can formally think of it as a function like this. Okay, there are a few different ways that I can write a sequence. So I can write a sequence in a few different ways. In a few different ways. So let's look at the second one, the second, uh, the second sequence that I showed before. One way I can write, I can write it is to just list the numbers. Right. For example, it's it's two, four, eight, sixteen, right, and so on. So just list them. List, list them. Or another way to write the same thing is to write down the formula for the n term. Right, for example, in this case, the formula is 2 to the n. Right. So the second way is to write formula for the n term of the sequence if I know the formula. Right. Okay, the third one is basically the second one, but we just want to emphasize that the sequence start from one and goes all the way into un, until infinity right? by putting a curly brackets around it. So these three ways are the same thing; right? they represent the same sequence the same thing okay now let's look at some problems related to sequences the first problem asks you to list uh, the numbers list numbers in the following sequences sequences so the first one uh, the sequence is given by square root of n I give you a formula for a n so to list them just plug in n in there right? so the first term plug in 1 you get square root of 1 a2 square root of 2, a3, square root of 3, a4, square root of 4, and so on. Right. So we get 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 4, which is 2, and so on, so forth. Right. That's the first one. The second one, the sequence is given by the formula cosine of n pi here. Again, you just plug in n in there, right? So a1, plug in 1 there, you get cosine of pi. a2, plug in 2 in there, you get cosine of 2 pi. 
a three is cosine of three pi. And a four is cosine of four pi. And so on, right? Uh, that's a typo. Uh, there's no n here. Cosine of pi. If you recall the unit circle, right? When you talk about a trigonometric function, cosine of pi is minus one, and two pi it's one, three pi it's minus one, cosine of four pi is one, so it's minus one, one. Minus one, one, and so on. Uh, the sequence gonna be alternating between one, minus one, and one. Now let's see another problem. Problem. This problem asks you to. Uh, as you to find the formula for each sequence so the first sequence is listed as 1, 3, 5, 7 9 and so on. Right? You want to find a formula for this sequence. Uh, when I say a formula, I mean formula for the n term, right? A n. This problem is generally harder than the previous one because it required you to recognize pattern. Uh, it, you need to recognize recognize patterns. So you have to ask yourself, do you recognize pattern? Right? So let's write down the first term, a1, it's 1. How? a2 is 3. If you notice that it's it's almost twice the index, right? But it gets subtracted by one. Or you can notice that this sequence is a sequence of of or integer. Right. So like I said, it's almost twice the index, but it gets subtracted by one. So it's twice two times of the index one. Yeah. But it gets subtracted from one. Again, this one is the same thing, so two times the index and minus one. A three is five and again it's two times the index and then minus one. So now we recognize the pattern, we see the relation, we can come up with a formula for a n. It's going to follow the same thing, right? It's twice the index to the index is n, so 2n minus 1. So we get 2n minus 1 here. Yeah. Let's see another one. Now the sequence is 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. Again, to come up with a formula, you need to recognize patterns. And it's, in this case, it's pretty easy to recognize. You can see that this is a sequence of uh, squares. Of numbers, right? 
Okay. So how do we relate each number to the in indices here? So A1 is equal to 2 square, right? We see that 2 is, is 1 greater than the, the index, so 1 plus 1 square, right? 2 is 1 greater than the index. 2 is 9 equal to 3 square. Again, it follows the same pattern. It's 1 greater than the index and then square. Right? You see that this is the pattern here. A3 is equal to 16. It's 4 square. Again, the same pattern. Right? 1 plus uh, 3. Now, uh, this keep going. So a n, we see the pattern. It's just gonna be one plus the index. So n, right? Square. This is a good answer. Uh, you can just answer this, but you can also expand it out to get n square plus two n plus one by multiplying one plus n to one plus n. You're gonna get this one.